Welcome back to the Brew Crew Podcast, everyone. This is episode 239. Finally back from, uh, I took a trip, no one noticed, uh, from the podcast world, but I, I was in Nashville all week, and it's good to be back, because Nashville is fucking hot. You ever been? Hot, how, yes, uh, but how, how much hotter? So I went how to, hot was so, it? Yeah, I went to Florida uh, with for baseball, so this was a base, the last baseball trip of the year. Went to Florida, and I felt like, okay, it's hot, it's humid, but it's manageable, and you weren't sweating immediately when you walked out the door, uh, but very quickly after. In Nashville, you were quick. You were sweating inside. The, the air conditioner couldn't keep up, mm. and it was just it was so it was oh with the heat index it was over 100 degrees every day. I was there Tuesday to Sunday. Yeah, and it was it was the hottest I've ever been. Like I just couldn't manage the sweat it was it was just dripping constantly well for the mole people we're uh the hottest temperature of the century and now they're trying to confirm if it's the hottest temperature ever recorded just occurred in the mm. last week in death valley and death valley is now getting an influx of tourists because people want to experience they want to know what that's like 55 degrees centigrade well death valley that's where in arizona death valley is in california, california. uh dry heat i would prefer sorry stacy I prefer a dry heat over a humid heat any day. Heat is heat. It, it's it. I. Th it's not. I won't even make an argument. It's just not. Humid heat sucks. Humid. Dry heat. Dry heat's good. But I did bring you something okay. to accompany Richard in the future. It is uh, the under opener. I lost my pants in Nashville. I lost my pants in. And it's a magnet. Oh, okay. Good. No, that's even better. That's good. I'm glad. It, I'm glad that that makes it better. It was. Well, was everyone's, my, been to, my, everyone's going to Nashville these days. Oh, uh, well, I'm going to say, um, here's my review of Nashville. Don't go. Okay, here it is. Um, what is that? A typewriter? It's a keyboard. Oh, here, okay. <laughs> so my review of Nashville. Dear Nashville, you're not great. Everything's country, obviously. That That's what the point. I feel like Nashville is a better represent, representation of rock music even than... Did you go to Kid Rock's bar? Wood? I passed by it. I didn't go in. Okay. Um, had that, the that was in the news. Had the kids. What What was in the news? Because he boycotted Bud Light, but they still serve Bud Light at it. Oh, bar. interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> well, business is business. Um, you know, you want to accommodate every everybody with dollars. Yeah. Um, at least that's what uh, that's what I would do. But I wouldn't boycott Bud Light. Right. So that's how we're different, me and Kid Rock. In every other way, we're pretty much the same. So, was it a good weekend, though? I mean, once you got to the... Oh, no, no. No, it wasn't a um, good weekend? I, I enjoyed watching my son play. We went 0-4. Okay. And then we were supposed to have a game Saturday, but that got rained out. And teams who were in the bottom part of the bracket... Exactly. They just canceled their games. Because they were consolation. Like, what's the point if you're going to be... Yeah. If you're not in the championship bracket, why even bother? So... Were any of the, any of the four games close? Or where? Yeah. Was it so the, the, the game that my son pitched stayed close. That was we ended six to three. Now it's interesting because my this is just an aside, not not beer related. Um, my son is one of the starting pitchers. There's three basic starting pitchers on the team who pitch every tournament. He's one of them. Yeah. He has zero wins, four losses to his in his statistics and some you know non decisions. Yeah. But four losses and all of his games were closer than any other game. When the some of the oh, other starting pitchers have wins and losses, just like it's the wins and losses for youth baseball are based on how the team plays. It has largely nothing to do with the pitcher. So you'd argue they're all quality starts. Definitely quality starts. By, by, you got by the five man. innings yeah. easily in each game. Um, now they do have a pitch limit of ninety. Yeah. Uh, as which which to, I agree with. Because, yeah, I agree with too. You know, look what happened to like guys like Mark Pryor, you know, Steven Strasburg yeah. or whatever when they didn't have those. Pitch exactly. Outs. So with relievers, you can split it up over three games, two to three games. But with starters, it's usually you get one, you pitch once and that's it. But he's also a, a first baseman. So he plays every game. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I enjoyed watching that game. We got blown out the other games. But it is nice to see the best teams in the country. For this is, I'll just wrap this up because I know it's not beer related. It's nice to see the best teams in the country. And that the players that are 15 years old on those teams aren't much better or they're the same as, you know, my son and his teammates. Yeah, no one's We're just, as a team, we're not as good. They're good as a team. Yeah. But as individuals, I think he's competitive. The, uh, and 
like you said, that's refreshing that, you know, kids yeah. aren't getting, you know, absolutely, absolutely, you know, devastated or blown away. There's some there. kids with last names like Cruz and Gonzalez who are just hitting 400 foot home runs. Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, but those kids are, there was already decided by divinity fate. Yeah. that they were going to be good at baseball. But for the most part, yeah, he's right along, along with them. That's good. But Nashville was super hot. Got you that. And I did get some beer. It's good to be back in Dayton. You, you did get some beer? Yeah. Ask me about my weekend. How was your weekend? I drank a beer. Ooh. I drank another beer. Three beers. Mm. Four beers. Oh, no. Five beers. Oh, no. Six beers. Seven beers. Eight beers. Nine beers. So, yeah, that's about it. I love that. That's amazing. I'm glad <laughs> you drank all those beers. I also drank a shitload of beer. Just so much beer this And weekend. you marked zero of them and untapped. I did mark one of them. I didn't see it. I marked one beer Maybe and I stopped. Following you. Uh, it was because I went to a place that I guess is famous, um, Hattie B's. Yeah, Hattie B's is famous. I went there and had their their beer, the beer that they have collaborated yeah. with to brew. Interesting. Thought it was pretty good. Um, all the other beer was light beer. I didn't have any craft beer other than the beer I'm bringing here today, and I didn't drink that. So um, Tennessee and Kentucky, not craft beer states. Not I, craft I, I, beer I, I states. Won't, I, will, I will fight people on that. Not so, craft beer so states. put your comments down below. There's again, you know, all you blogospheres and everything like that, poutine gravy, everything. Put it down below. Your, your state doesn't make shit. Yeah, I don't think we. I don't think there's much argument from there. You know, um, both Louisville and Nashville uh, are on the Bourbon Trail. Well, Nashville's outside the Bourbon Trail, but it's right there. It's you just go ten minutes north and you're back in Kentucky. Uh, and we passed by the Maker's Mark factory on the way to Nashville. All right, so, so there's so much uh maker's mark is one of my uh favorite destinations there they're in woodford reserve i have for gone. different reasons oh for different reasons um yeah woodford is the the whole uh marketing beast is behind woodford i mean the most expensive horses in the country come from there. million dollar ranches you're just driving through it and it's picturesque and uh where maker's mark uh it's still brewed out of the same facilities it has been they mm. still hand cut all of the labels they hand affix all of the labels none of that is automated uh the tour starts in the original uh distributor creator's house it's i mean it just mm -hmm. it's steeped in tradition and they've mastered the art of getting that wax off the cap they have a little pull thing yeah, yeah it's it's crazy how like the beer waxy people. when because you can hand dip that's one of the gimmicks that they have there is you can yeah hand dip your own bottle so and just, the hoff's so in-laws who i met in cleveland they're like Maker's Mark signature VIPs or whatever. Yep. And so and they, then... So they've done all that stuff. When you get invited down, because let's say we split we split a barrel, because this happens all the time. Like, you know, 8, 9, 10, 12 years later, they invite you down for the tapping and everything. Oh, and no it's shit. like they roll That's up the red sweet. carpet. But I mean, these barrels... I mean, like the big bars... Are, sorry, Stacey, Century Bar. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple bars in the area that have their own barrel mm -hmm. at makers oh, and wow. you can go by and see it nice and it's and it's no different than the other or they no because they do they they, they, they they do different recipes oh, so okay. um what they do is they put the staves so a barrel is a wooden barrel but let's say you want to make something vanilla there's an option for seven different staves mm -hmm. essentially uh putting it like a one by six but it's soaked in the flavor profile mm. or the adjuncts that you want yeah and you put it in there and oh okay so they'll do like two vanilla cool. two cherry yeah and oh, but I they're like in the that. stage like and then it sits and there they put for, that in the barrel yep oh and then i love that then it sits in that's amazing that should be a beer thing they should have that in in beer form for for uh, yeah like in like, the oak uh yeah in the oak photos or something in the like photos, that makes yeah sense. or the bourbon barrel but yeah if you do uh, the bourbon trail and again you can i've only been one time for over a couple of days but you're always gonna i could do it every couple of years and still be elated to go oh yeah I, i'm gonna Hopefully do it here soon. Um, but I, I want to preempt the after review segment. Okay. I know you probably, you got stuff you want to talk about? No, first? go ahead. Okay. So just think about this throughout throughout the episode. The, the Madden ratings came out today. I believe it was today. And uh, I got curious, what what do they, what contributes to the Madden ratings? Yeah. Um, uh, what is his name? Justin Jeffries? Jefferson? Justin know. Jefferson for the uh, wide receiver for the football. Minnesota Vikings. 99 is in the 99 club. And I was like, what What constitutes an overall rating? Well, here are the things that make up that rating. It's strength, agility, 
speed, stamina, awareness, injury, and toughness. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, how can we tie this to beer? So I want you to think about breweries that fit into these categories by the the um, okay. by the morphed definitions that I'm going to give you. So for strength, that's just the strength of the brand or their lineup. Okay. Who has this, what brewery has the strongest brand or lineup of beers? For agility, I uh, have changed that to the ability to produce different beers well. Okay. So diversity, really. Speed. Who makes a lot of beers all at the same time or fast or constantly? Just has a shitload of beers on tap uh, that they've made. Stamina. The lineup, brewery with the lineup that is uh, has the best staying power. So beers that don't need to change. Yep. Within that brewery, they're, and they're gonna they're gonna be good. Awareness, the ability for the brewery to react to shifts in the market, or the brewery that does that best, or 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 most, maybe not best because it's gonna be that's gonna be a hard one. What breweries do you know of that persist? Kind of, not persist, but um, make market. Uh, make beers based on what they perceive the market wants okay. instead of making what they want to be, you know sure injury best sellerable beer so which beer can can kind of stand that's a tough one that's gonna separate. the uh can stand through the expiration dates of most beers and then toughness which is kind of the same but um i didn't really know what to do for this one so i said a brand with the most forgiving failures so a brand that produces failures that were just kind of like, yeah, but it's this beer. It's this brand. So it's okay. I, it's not California Commons, basically. Uh, which is an amazing segue for the big beer news this week. Um, the brand that I went with immediately in my head, because I can defend all of them besides Cellarable, because mm -hmm. I'm not aware of anything that you can have from them that is Cellarable. Also, oh, you're going to do a, a brand through the all the cat. I was, I was kind of being okay with... Having a 99 in each category. Yeah. So I would go, so this would be my, this would be my overall as Toppling Goliath. Oh, okay. Because I, once you, I, I once you made a, a forgivable pick. beer, good I was pick. like forgivable because the Dorothy's Old World mm -hmm, Common mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is a abhorrent beer, but yeah. all the rest of it, and they adjusted fire, which is another big thing by the sour craze. Yes. They didn't have, or a sour smoothie. They don't have anything that's like traditionally like an X or XXL or even like a Drecker level, but they're right there. No smoothies, but they have those like yeah, they fandangos. Have fandangos. Those are that's a good series right there. That's hey, that's a good pick to kind of stretch across all of them. I thought maybe you could provide. A, you might think I'm saying give me the strongest brewer, then separately a different brewer that has yeah. you know this. But I like the idea of one brewer. But yeah, let's let's. Uh, I'll think about that as well. I have not assigned a brewer to those categories. Yeah, if you want to ruminate on that. Yeah. Well, well I, I like your answer. So so we're talking about California Common. The big news, and I didn't realize this. So Anchor Steam is closing down, and I shit on Anchor Steam all the time. Mm. Oh, because... Oh, shitting sound? <laughs> yeah, I just, <laughs> should write that down. Uh, because uh, California Common, I'm an anti, and there's a lot of people, it's a very divisive beer uh, style of beer. Have you met someone who is in favor of it? Multiple people. Wow. Yeah, and especially like talking on message boards and trying oh, yeah. to get out there a little bit more too. But, uh, and just the style that it takes to create. So anyways, Anchor Steam is the oldest recognized craft brewer in the U.S. Mm. And they're shutting down. So Sapporo bought them. Okay. And this is a lot of the backlash. And we're not going to get into the, you know, the culture and, you know, people pulling out of San Francisco anyways, because it's all over the news. But... I, they haven't said if it's in response to that or if it's in response to the product or whatever, like not being able to adjust fire. But the fact is, after 127 years of being in business, mm -hmm. they're shutting down. Shutting down. That's a long time. Not, not selling, shutting down. Shutting down. So that that is uh, Anchor Steam. And then the other big news is Bush Light teased their... They did. They teased their flavor for their fruit beer if you want if we can call it that for next year yeah and it was a can of bush light with a giant watermelon rolling by and i know jt and i uh have different thoughts on mm -hmm. this i am not excited you're not excited i'm it, okay with it this is this is another regression this is i would put blackpool 10 <laughs> bush light peach bleach at seven and uh a watermelon is at like 
is at four. I think this peach is going to be worse. Uh, I don't know. I think watermelon will have a refreshing taste, but we'll find out. I think that your time is done, and I... Perfect. <laughs> I want to know where he was going with that. Oh, yeah, no, no. It, it, then it trails off. All right, I don't know if we've done Southern Grist, because I didn't look at the spreadsheet. We have done... You owe me an update. We have done Southern I do owe you an... I know. I think about it all the time. Um, it's just, now baseball's over. Let's, let me... I'm not going to make promises, but I am going to put more effort into getting that update. Southern Southern Grist out of Nashville, Tennessee. I got two beers from Southern Grist. Yep. But the first one here is Strawberry Upside Down Cake IPA, which you can get here in Ohio. You can get this You beer. can get it? You can get it in Ohio. Now I'm questioning myself whether or not we've We'll had find it. out. But Southern Grist is out of Nashville. They have two locations. Um, they define it as East Nashville and West Nashville. I wouldn't know the difference. I did not go to... to One's on the West? Well, yeah, I could tell that, but... If I'm in, if I'm there, I don't know which side's west and east. You know, I'd have to look at the. Sun. You're gonna ask me a bunch of questions. Is that what you're gonna do? <laughs> so, uh, so they're out of Nashville. So this is one brewery. It's it like Matt said. It's not really a um, beer town, but there are breweries there. There are breweries in Gatlinburg, uh, as we discussed when I got back from Gatlinburg a year ago. Uh, but uh, this is the one that I could find beer of. And I did not go to a brewery, including Southern Grist. Got this at the store. Uh, found out later that they have it here. What's the Ohio. specs on this, JT? What are the specs on this beer? This is a 7.5% IPA. And it is a New England style. Brewed with lactose, vanilla, strawberry, and hopped with Azaka and Huel melon. Huel? Huel. Ready? Yep. Not primed. Primed. Oh, yours is primed? Well, I, Ooh, I got a 50 good 50 there. Ready? Three, two, one. So now the next beer we need to roll. Remind me if I don't remember. And if neither of us remember, then we're going to have an unrolled beer. So this one, a upside down kick IPA. For, it's a first for me. I believe maybe we've had an upside down cake. A pineapple, maybe turnover IPA, but I don't think that was an IPA. This, I think this might be the first strawberry IPA I've ever had. Your silence, it, I will fill the silence, but I like that you, I like that your brain, I could see that my, your brain my, is moving. My mind was coming into it. As in, um, it was a Tennessee, New England style IPA. And I was like, ah, oh, like you, Tennessee, oh yeah. You can't, you can't Tennessee. get any worse. I mean, it, it started off wild Ohio level for me. Um, oh, did you see, uh, put a push pit in that. Did you see um, Chuglo Stev, like, mea, trying to do a mea culpa last week? He's like, did I do a bad? Like, Oh, yeah, I saw thing? that, yeah. And then I was like, you don't know us. He apologized, yeah, and then I, I wrote, don't ever apologize. Yeah. Always apologize, Stev. Never apologize <laughs> for giving free beer and us shitting, on, <laughs> shitting all over it. I still have it in the fridge, too. Um, I offered some to um, the Hoff on mm. Wednesday. Um, oh, I yeah. Was like, just, just don't, I was like, don't take this. That's that's not good. This is this is pleasantly delightful mm -hmm. and dare I say borderline overcarbonated. Borderline, oh, me, me... not not. It's close. It's okay. approaching. It's amazingly pleasant at the carbonation level. Like they they toyed with it a little bit. You think? And I appreciate that. I I don't think it's so, um close to being overcarbonated. I think you could carbonate this more. I like that we're in disagreement there. LFG on the bottom. Let's fucking go. No. Uh, looking for group. Um, it's a command in MMORPGs when you log into a game and you're looking for a group to go slay some beasts. I don't think that's what they mean by that. Looking for girls. LFG. LF looking for girls. Yeah. Looking for girls. I think you're going to find girls with a strawberry banana. Yeah, you'll get that. You'll get, you'll get girls for sure. They're going to love this. Yeah. Uh, Man, but boy, does it taper off. So if you want a fruit beer and you're you're um, hankered by the desire that you're put you're put off by the malingering fruit, this doesn't have that. Malingering. Yeah. So it persists. This doesn't. The fruit taste is taken over after. So it like comes to a crescendo. There's two different flavor profiles. Mm -hmm. There's the IPA mm -hmm. and then there's the fruit. And they go after a while. That's those are the two flavors. You yeah, have the, the, IPA. the IPA and the fruit, which is longer. Which forms but this type of 
motion. Which is longer but less intense. Okay. The strawberry banana or strawberry, sorry. The, so you're saying the fruit is longer and less intense. I like that you're, sorry, you're drawing Stacey. a picture of, of data. Yep. Longer and less intense, so lower on the chart. Yep. But, but sustains. The IPA part. Sustains. Sustains, but is but less intense. Less intense. <laughs> Man, that's hard. See, that's that effervescence. Both of us are coming through. Yeah, I like it. I like I like that this level of effervescence. Um, yeah, yeah. I, oh man, I gotta think about what she said. All the things she said. So you're saying the fruit less, last, last, long, like less time. The fruit taste mm -hmm. is shorter, yes. but more intense. The On IPA each sip or in the persists. in the whole beer. Well, like after a, a long pause and then like I go to talk to you mm -hmm. about it. It's gone? Okay. So you're I talking get... sip to sip. Gulp to gulp. Gulp to gulp. But as the beer as a whole, you're still getting fruit? You're still getting all the flavors? Yeah, all the flavors are there. Okay. It's, it's just that okay. it's just that intense strawberry, which is awesome. Yeah. There's not strawberry, I mean, outside of the aforementioned Toplin Goliath with their strawberry fandango mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah, strawberry great is a great beer. A fruit that they could put more of in beers for me. It could replace most of the coconut, most of the water. Why don't they go strawberry? Strawberry should be featured in more beers. Stra a strawberry here, Bush, come to me. You, do you think it has Listen for a to do with the, uh, the. They grow strawberries everywhere. Watermelons are grown in no, like but six places. Don't strawberries have um, a greater abundance of fruit flies? I think there's a, some statistic that strawberries are the, the most inf infested fruit uh, with fruit flies. That's because they can mimic the seed and you don't know they're there. Something like that. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. A little, look it little, up. little bit of protein. These are not so, facts. These, so, look so, these so, up. So it has protein. Before you talk, tell your friends that stat, look it up. And say, I heard this on a I very reputable from, podcast. Yeah, very reputable podcast. We're full of facts. So anyway. This is, I don't know. This is this is good. I'll step aside. You you go full review on it. You got the can art. You want to can well, art it? Do we want to can art before the review? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, this counter bonus segment brought to you by Stev. Chuckle of Stev, who gave us a skunked beer. <laughs> <laughs> that, on, pr on purpose. That, on purpose. A, that dickhead. <clears throat> and that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. So a red label. And within that red label, there's red foil seeds that mimic what a strawberry, the outer skin of a strawberry looks like. Then there's uh, the strawberry upside down cake IPA font or text is in a upside down uh, tear cake, tiered cake, whatever they call that, like a wedding cake. But a, a, an upside down cake does not look like that. An upside down cake is like a short cake that's just turned upside down. Do you think this is eliciting or placating to morons? I don't. I think this is placating to uh, play on words. So strawberry, longer word, upside down. Less long cake. Not really, actually. No, I think strawberries the strawberry, longer one, word. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Upside one, down. Two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. With the space, eleven, ten. With that. So that's two words, though. So they could have went yeah. strawberry upside. They're just down making the font cake. smaller. But I, I'm okay with it. It's just a tiered cake. Is it upside down cake? Is not. Is it's just a short cake, right? Like the, the gold colored, cake that's turned upside down. No. What does an upside down cake look like? It's one layer. It's not multi-layered. It's right? like a Dan and fruit on the bottom. Fruit on the bottom. That's what it looks like. That, but it's turned upside down, so it's fruit on the top now. Yeah. That's it. So I'd be like, do they make a, a Dan and fruit on the top? Most yogurt is fruit on the top. Oh, is it? Yeah. I don't know. I don't eat a lot of yogurt. Um, and the candles, they are, are... like You know how they have the number candles for, oh, you just turned 18. This is LFG, their letters. Let's fucking go. At least that's what I think it stands for. And the flames are also pointed down. The flames are... I thought you were going to play a sound. I don't know why you tapping on your phone made me think a sound was coming. Uh, <laughs> but uh, You never know. Yeah, you never know. Uh, but yeah, the flames are the, are the wrong way. But anyway, 
That's the can art boner segment. No, because the words that it's not, oh, because I'm like maybe you're supposed to I don't know maybe that's to get you to turn it upside down to shake it up. But also, I guess in my house, whatever your favorite dessert is is what we make your birthday cake and we put candles in it. So like I like a certain cake and then my wife likes cherry pie and then whatever we'll put candles in that. But you wouldn't really put candles in an upside down cake, especially before you turn it upside down. That's a dangerous move. We've never had Southern Grist on the pod. Boom. Never had it. Boom. There it is. The actual boom. Uh, and that is, that is that. And it does say, no one enjoys stale cake. Drink fresh, keep cold. I like that the drink fresh, keep cold, which is a common thing you see on beer, is, is preceded by a custom message. Because the drink fresh, keep cold, that's that's pretty standard on a lot of beers. Yeah, I, I, I love the applicability to this beer yes, specifically. They, they made it their own. And this is from Nashville, Tennessee. That's it. I mean, that's the Can Art Bunner segment brought to you by Steph. Thanks, Steph, for the Can Art sponsorship. What are your thoughts? All right. I'm going to – I got my score. I, I'm, I'm marking in this beer right now. I so, got my score. So, anyways – off the top rope, I give this beer a 4.5. Um, Ooh, it wow. is for, it's classified, um, I'm going to cheat a little bit because it was in untapped when I was writing in the scores. It's classified as a milkshake IPA. Mm. I don't think it, I don't think it lingers on the palate. I know it's made with the lactose and maybe yeah. that's why it amps up that initial fruit intensity. <clears throat> Sorry, Stacy. I don't get too much of the cake. But I guess that could be attributed to the sugar, just mm -hmm. my lack of understanding. I've received three separate emails from Cicer the Cicerone uh, people like in the last three weeks. So maybe, it, maybe it's just a sign that it's time to start doing that. I want to do that too. Um, but again, yeah, as, a, as a New England and somebody that doesn't appreciate New England just because I think the market is uber saturated with them and there's other types of uh, beer that I want. Um, but again, a 4.5, this is, this is amazing. And again, this is a plea nor nay a call to arms for everyone start demanding more strawberry in your beer if you like fruit if you don't that's fine you know because there's a lot of other good but like if you like fruit in a beer it doesn't have to be a fruited beer um i like strawberry or maybe i need to know why strawberry isn't more prevalent if it's the fruit fly theory or whatever but again off the top rope 4.5 this was uh, an amazing and it, uh, the drinkability on this because that fruit retards so quick Mm. This this is like a uh, blapple on steroids. Like if this could be like a IPA blapple. Like if you wanted to like, you know, it could, it could be a blapple be. is like a you know a, you could sustain all day on a, a blapple. You couldn't sustain all day on this, but you could easily have a couple of these. You could not sustain all day on this. Seven point five is a little much to sustain on, but uh, yeah, I agree with everything you said about it being like an IPA blapple. My issue with this beer is that as you drink drink it more and more, I think the bitterness, there's a bitterness to this beer that comes out more. And uh, as you get used to the strawberry and the lactose, it, uh, it kind of, your, your mind can strip away those flavors and then taste the beer as it actually is. And I think it, um, I think it lacks Real, real I, IPA complexity. I knew you were waiting for that. I think that the flavors that I want. Do you know what that that sound is from? That is, is that maybe Indiana Jones? No, it's Among Us. Among Us. Oh, okay. Sus. Yeah, I only played that game like one time. So, um, the flavors that I want, which are the strawberry upside down cake, um, it's there. I don't As know the about the upside guy. down. Pick. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that the lactose contributes to some sort of vanilla highlight to the strawberry. Gives you kind of that um, strawberries and cream kind of flavor. Where the strawberry is still the highlight. I couldn't pick out. If you were to give me this beer and not tell me what its name was, I wouldn't say upside down cake. I would just say creamy strawberry IPA. Um, so you do get the IPA flavor. But I think as you get deeper into the beer, you can start to taste the booze a little bit. Which I don't think it contributes to the booziness. I think it's or attributes, not contributes. Attributes to the booziness. I think it attributes to the lack of of IPA. Um, I think they kind of just were like, we have this IPA. It's pretty standard and basic. Let's just throw some strawberry shit in there and make it really good. That's what I think, and I'm okay with that. 
but I don't know if this is if everyone's the same, but you know when you drink the same thing for long enough, some of the really great flavors that are highlighted at first they wear off and you start tasting other things. So this beer started to get less good as I drank it. You get palate blind to it. Mm -hmm. Instead of nose blind, pa palate blind. Palate blind. I still get the strawberry vanilla on the breath, but the the beer itself is starting to taste less good. And I'm gonna. I don't think this is as refreshing. The the Blapple's uh, utility was in its refreshingness. It 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 was great on a hot day, but also good on a cold day. It had just this that's the um, new england characteristics of this beer should be new england ipas aren't refreshing they're not i find them to be refreshing i find them to be lighter and easier to drink less dry they're heavier though they can be heavier that's true they can be heavier so like you don't want to drink them uh, in nashville on a 105 degree day yeah, you but, weren't like craving like, oh, God, yeah, I don't want to be full give on me a beer. Bocho. Right. I don't want to be full on beer, but I feel like they don't like I would drink that on a hot day um, before I drink a West Coast because the West Coast would dry my palate out. And then I'd really feel like shit. Whereas a, a New yeah, England I, might make might keep me salivated. This is this is God. This is the beauty. And this is why we do it, because we don't agree. And it's we don't it's, agree. It's, it's you water, want it's a West Coast on a really hot day. Yeah, because I'm always going to accompany it with water. Oh, okay. Anyways, well, that's that. Well, that's that's that's. I guess. Okay, which beer would you have accompanied with water? Uh, then, I, <laughs> so then, then I might so have then a different answer. Happen. Maybe I have yeah. a different answer. Yeah, I just I need to get I need to have a shot. Just just JT assassination um, of Matt. I'm at a three two five, and I I can't change my score because I had that score before Matt gave his score. But as I drink through this beer and I think through it, um, you'd lower it. I really like the the strawberry. Uh, cream kind of thing i think that does uh, the 16 ounce southern... hurt this beer yeah it hurts this beer for See? sure it should be in a 12 ounce can and uh, and southern grist you should take that strawberry that you, you've mastered that part and carry it through something else because i want to taste it more and again but whatever's whatever the base of this beer is i'm not a big fan of it and, and that's the interesting thing and that's why people do it with ipas because one ipas um allow a lot of um give take yeah. so that's why ipas are relatively easy to make because you can throw a bunch of fucking adjuncts in there and there's enough uh voluminous container like there's enough in it to carry it where like a lager or whatever because a lager you know german purity laws it's tough to throw adjuncts into that mm -hmm. and to uh, you know make it feel like cohesive or a part of the amalgamation yes i agree with that uh roll this know, you roll know, it Roll it. Yeah, roll it. Thank you. Uh, I, you don't see a lot of... Uh, how, how many fruited milkshake IPAs have we really seen? Not a whole lot. I started really getting into the the nuts and bolts with the... Um, I wanted to make it a pull down on the spreadsheet, but I started putting like if it's not just an IPA, but like the offset. Mm -hmm. So like I would put like a fruited or a milkshake IPA. Okay. Maybe not, but... Well, that's good. Okay. Uh, well, we'll have to look in to see how many of those we have had. Now, we ha also haven't had something in our wheelhouse in a while. I've noticed anyway. We're purposely straying. Yeah, we are. We're trying to pop, you know, pop the guys, as they say in the wrestling business. Like, mm -hmm. do, do something for yeah. each other. Like, obviously, you want to cater to... I, I don't think, even though we dipped a little bit, I don't think people are like, oh, and they look in the description, they're like, oh, they had two horseshit beers. Oh, yeah, know? no, they're not looking at they're not looking at that. Um, I think, you know, we just, just it's just about growing a, a steady audience, and some people a just brand. fell off, you know? This beer, I don't know if you can get this here, uh, because it's a collaboration with a brewery in Colorado, uh, so I would assume it is available widely, but... This is Rocket's Red Glare. And I love these red, white, and blue popsicles. I don't know how you feel about them. Bomb pop? Bomb pop, yeah. Uh, they're very good. And uh, this is a collaboration with Weldworks, Southern Grist Brewing. We've had Weldworks for sure. Rocket's Red Glare Sour Ale. It's been so long since we've had a sour on this show. It's a sour ale with Rocket Pops, Blue Raspberry, Snow Cone Syrup, and Lemon. This beer sounded amazing. This is going to blow up your... If you're on a low carb diet, I'm sure this will kill it. So will the other one. It had lactose in it. Um, 
But the Weldworks is out of Greeley, Colorado. In case you weren't weren't aware. Throw of some ABVs at me, bro. Let's see some ABVs. We got a. Uh, starting to hide this here? shit. What do we got here? We got five percent. Five percent. Five percent. Wheelhouse for a sour. Hopefully it's cold enough. It looks. It looks primed. It looks primed. It's yeah, it's primed. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Oh. Perfect. Oh. That Rolled and everything. Right. Rolled and all. Oh, yeah. This is a sour. It's been a long time since we've had a sour. And I will say... And wow. you're a fan of Bomb Pops, too. Like, I do like Bomb Pops. Okay. Um, so you're going to be the expert on this. I'm not going to be the expert. I don't I don't know that I'm an expert. I've had Bomb Pops, and I like them. But I don't know that I've had them it's, enough it's, to be the expert. It, it's sugar in it, and it's a They're pseudo sugar, dessert. Yeah, for JT, it's in JT's wheelhouse. Household chemicals and desserts. JT's in. I know all about those things. If they ever made a Windex dessert, JT would... I wouldn't like it. I don't like chemicals. Oh, yeah, gotta get that can. There is nothing as much to it. There it is. All right. I've spun the can. And the can bonus segment brought to you by Stev. Thanks, Stev. Uh, it's Bomb Pops. And on, on what looks to be some sort of maybe uh, inner jawbreaker background. Interesting. Like if you were to bite through a jawbreaker and how it's got all those layers, that's kind of what that looks like. I'm not sure. It's just it's, a colorful background. It's insane the size of jawbreakers you can get out there. You can yeah, get why would anyone want those can't, huge jawbreakers? You can't because you're going to get sticky. You can't even fit in your mouth. And I've got a massive mouth and I wouldn't even be able to fit it in. Yeah, I don't know like why anyone would want that. I find regular size jawbreakers to be unappealing. I I treat myself at work once a day. I get a Fireball, mm. which is jawbreaker. I don't like fast Fireballs. Love them. I don't like spicy cinnamon. I don't get the appeal. It's so like do the, you like unspicy cinnamon? Uh, yeah, like sweet sweet, sweet cinnamon, like cinnamon sugar. Cinnamon oh, so so crunch. so cinnamon cut with something. Yeah. Yeah, cut with something. So, like a big red big red gum is not cut with anything. It's got to be spicier than normal. No, that's cinnamon gum. That's just what cinnamon is. That's the spice of cinnamon. Do you ever? Did you ever do like in school the? No, big I didn't red, do the You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, no. Stick the big red oh, wrapper. No. Next week on the podcast, I'm gonna write that down. We're gonna do the big red challenge. What's that gonna do to me? Nothing. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't like cause a red rectangle. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. You lick the and you stick it to your forehead and you see how long you can. Oh, so it, it burns. It's. It's an interesting sensation. All right, we'll You've try never it done it before? No, never done it. Never even heard I, of it. I hope it's foil because like you have Cinnaburst or whatever that's paper. It mm -hmm. won't work with paper. Mm -hmm. It's got to be that foil. Okay. But you go like this and stick I'll it to your forehead. We'll try it. Just the dumb things that kids do. It'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah. So can I, that's can. It's got bomb pops and that's it. Do you eat a lot of popsicles as an adult? No. Uh, my daughters eat a ton of popsicles, which is great because... It was a relatively cheap snack, mm -hmm. like as kids or whatever. You know, that's why <laughs> I remember when the um, the the Dark Knight came out. Where did I get these cuts from? Oh, and yeah. everyone was like, "Oh, he had too many of those popsicles." <laughs> yeah. It was like a smaller mouth or whatever, and you you could you could cut your lips or whatever on those. You yeah. know, those. You know what I'm talking about? Freeze, yeah. freeze pops or freezies. oh those oh yeah those freezies that you gotta I got cut the top five, off. Five feet. I love here. those things. Those are those are the best. But so like I always grab two because my daughters want to fight over them, and I'm like I have two, and <laughs> the oldest one will go I want the blue one, and then the youngest one oh okay I want the purple one. It's mm -hmm. just the one I'm not switching them out. I'm not playing right. that because we'll stand there for ten minutes with the the freezer open. Yeah. This is good. After a couple seconds, there it's all just your tongue's frozen and you can't taste the yeah. difference anyway. But yeah, I agree. This is good. What a treat, though. Um, man, I don't know. I'm I'm not gonna give myself credit on this. I don't think had you told me that this is a bomb pop, or not told me it was a bomb pop, and I didn't know, and just it was poured into a glass or whatever. It's like ecto cooler. Yeah. So like, if you're having a sour and you're having like an ecto cooler. Mostly ecto coolers because a lot of people are like stealing that gimmick now. Mm -hmm. It's obviously that's what it's trying to mimic. Mm. This, gosh, it is, it is summery. It is light, um, sugary with you know like the blue raz that comes through. Um, the chemical like, what's the white in a bomb pop? 
What's the white? Yep. Shit, I don't know. <laughs> Come on, dessert guy. Like, I don't know. Figure. What is it? This, God, this, this tastes. This tastes like summer. You couldn't. Mm-hmm. Ha- you couldn't have this in winter. And you know what I'm thinking? Have you ever? Like Dayton has the a certain company that does the snow cones. Lemon. It's supposed to be lemon. Is it? Blue raspberry. Oh, okay. Probably. Snow cone syrup and lemon. Yeah. It's got to be lemon. It's probably lemon. Um, I don't know if it's like tropical snow or what it's called. Shaved ice, basically. Yeah. But the the one in Dayton, the, these trucks in Dayton, um, they allow you to put your own syrup on. They just give really? you the cup of, of oh, yeah, snow yeah, 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 and yeah, then yeah. you put your own syrup on. They and, had that in my uh, girls' school carnival. Yeah, it's usually at some kids' event. And they have it at a lot of baseball teams. All they make is ice. They just make ice. And then and they the, shave it for that's you. That's syrup. So, but you, I, everyone's put too much on. Oh, yeah. And that's what this tastes like. I, I'm going to blow I'm gonna blow the uh, the roof off this shit. Um, so, when you go to a restaurant and you order pop, God, that is like a cost. Like, one, mm. who, it's two bucks, first of all. You're not going to be able to drink like a two liter or something like yeah. that. It's just, I always get water or beer or something like that. And beer is the same thing, but I'm an adult, so I can do what I want. Mm-hmm. But I worked at Taco Bell. A box of syrup that mm-hmm. makes a thousand gallons of pop was mm-hmm. $11. Yeah. Like, the most expensive thing when you go through the drive through mm-hmm. and you're like, I want 14 cheeseburgers and a Diet Coke because you're watching your fucking You're watching line. your... What? The most yeah. expensive thing is the cup. It's not. It's not the fucking <sighs> ice. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not the labor. God knows that uh, because they pay nothing for what they move. It's the cup. It's the cup. So uh, because that syrup, there's like, because it is the viscosity of that mm-hmm. syrup. I mm-hmm. mean, you would seize an engine in, with that stuff. Yeah, like it costs McDonald's less than a nickel per soda. Oh wait, wait. Oh yeah, way less. Way again, less probably. Like, yeah. like a thousand gallons. For, you know, and they just pop those boxes off all the time. It's super condensed. But I'm talking straw, lid, cup, oh, yeah. syrup, less than a nickel. Labor, ice. Everything. And and they're ma- they're selling it for a, a dollar minimum. Yeah. Sometimes two, three bucks. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the most profitable part of a McDonald's meal. Yeah. So uh, one of my favorite things when I, I, I drink a little bit of pop now, uh, not so much. Our house has transitioned. Uh, we just had this discussion uh, a couple of weeks ago, I used to be Coke all the way through. My mom won't touch anything but Coke. Mm. No Pepsi, nothing like that. Mm. So we're a Pepsi house now. Yeah. Uh, we, we flipped, and I didn't like Pepsi because it would leave like a film on my teeth. Now I just drink it with the JBV. Um, that's my go-to mixed drink when I'm at home. But uh, the, the, the reason I bring this up is my buddy worked for Pepsi, and he could get a flat... Of 20 ounce bottles, so so a flat is a mm-hmm. row of uh, four by six, so it's 24 bottles mm-hmm. for six dollars a piece. Okay. So that's 25 cents a bottle. Yeah. And Pepsi was still making a profit on those flats. Wow. At 25 cents a bottle, Damn. and you're buying it at the store for like you know. Three, yeah, they're putting them in vending machines you know, for a dollar fifty. Two for three dollars yeah. an hour or something like that. Yeah. And yeah, it, we're also Pepsi in our house. It, yeah, it, we do Pepsi. It I. I'll buy energy drinks because I, I don't have that ingrained in my head, but I won't buy like bottled pop it because I'm like, mm. I used to get that stuff for a quarter. Um, I overdo energy drinks. I just can't stop. Really? How many? Like I try to limit myself to two a week. So Oh, I, I drink like one a day pretty much. Every day? Yeah. What energy Well, some drinks? days I'll skip. Well, now I'm doing, we're drinking ghost a lot. Oh, okay. So now I just discovered them in Africa. Ghost is These great. are real revelations. Ghost is great, but we were They're o- uber sweet, but like well, if you're working out, if you do if you weight lift, drink Bang cuz Bang has creatine in it and it'll help it's it'll help. It's super creatine. Super creatine, but it's still it's they still got, doing the same shit. Which is what they got sued too. for because super they're saying super creatine isn't that's the second suit. The first suit was them uh, stealing uh, shelf space from uh, cuz uh, Bang is for sale right now on Woot.com. I'll shout to Woot. But um, I haven't seen I, Bang. I got turned on to. I have people shipping me. God, this is shipping me caffeine free bangs when I was in Africa. Love them. Caffeine free bang. I, 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 I will implore whoever hears this. I love caffeine free energy drinks. I don't need the energy. Mm. I bring enough. You just want the flavor. I just love that. 
toxic flavor. Yeah, I love Red Bull sugar-free flavor. That, that That's the best Red Bull. Now, the other stuff, I'm drinking for the caffeine. Red Red Bull, 100%. So, like, if I could fill my fridge with anything, it would be Red Bull sugar-free. Mm-hmm. Um, Great taste. My favorite drink in the world is uh, sugar-free Red Bull and cranberry juice. Oh, I like that. That's my... That sounds great. Oh. Um, we went off... We've been doing Ghost. Ghost. I caught up on Africa. Those, those like, blue Raz, mm-hmm. the... I haven't had the Bubblicious one. I've seen it at the store. The Sour Apple isn't my favorite. Um, it's the... Um, I like uh, the Sour Patch Kids. Sour Patch Kids. I, right? I drink those all the time. I like the citrus one. And I just had my first citrus last week. Citrus is good. And you there's two Bubblicious. The, I think the the one, I think it might be strawberry. Not good. The other one, whatever that is, it's a darker red. Amazing. I could do an energy drink power ranking, though, for sure. And we, yeah, we, we were drinking Bang, and we do some of the... Uh, Too much caffeine for me in the Bang. What is the black cans? Or Mo- Mo- L- leaded monster? No, it's not monster. Oh, rain. Rain. Yeah. Yeah, rain. Rain has some good flavors too. Wow. Rain has an orange creamsicle that's really good. You lost me. Uh, monster. I know you don't like monster fake orange. orange. Zero or sunrise zero or whatever. I haven't had a monster in a long time. Their their red one though is actually tastes like a jelly donut. Mm. Um, but yeah, ghost. I got turned on to ghost when I was in. Ghost Africa. is good. This is ghost is where it's at. We could do a God, we could you, do an energy drink podcast. Could yeah. you imagine an energy drink podcast? It'd be like <laughs> no, okay, so Steph would be like, "You guys, I could tell that you guys had like a, a whale or a double digit beer, and then like an energy drink podcast." You'd be like, "Hey, what do you think about this?" Uh, <laughs> yeah. We'd be all fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just hey, I I got, I got my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> the description for the podcast would be like three pages. Just gibberish. <laughs> okay, gibberish. So. You gave the counter boner. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go off the top rope. This is, God, this is. I like this. I gave this first score because it was such a surprise. I like this beer, man. I like this beer better for the mm. place and time it is. But I'm gonna come off the top rope. This is a 4.5. Again, this tastes like summer. This we're in the sweet spot. I'm not into the idea idea of seasonal beers. There, there's some. If a beer is, it's good all year round. For the most part, um, I'll put a push pin in this. This is a summer only beer. I don't mm. know if I would enjoy this as much when it's snowing the shit outside. The, I would what want, if you use the I, snow? I want, I want more than this. Pour the beer in the snow. Ah. Beer snow cone. Beer, uh, beer cone. Beer cone. This you picked. You picked two whoppers today. I was just happy to get back to a sour because it's been so long. The fact that. The fact that Tennessee provided both of these. Yeah. I might have to re-think mm. my feelings. If it's one brewery. Mm. And and this one came with as a collab with a Colorado. With Wellworks, which makes solid shit. Okay. Well, I, I think that score is fair. I, I uh, agree with the, most of the things you said. I also think that... Um, when I thought about the snow cones that they have at the baseball tournaments or at the carnival, that you can get your own syrup. The problem is, is when you do that and you accidentally put too much, it's uneatable, un- undrinkable, whatever it winds up being, mostly liquid. Um, it's too sweet, too sugar sweet. Uh, whereas this has found a way to be a liquid and not be overbearing in the sweet department. And it has a great sour. I agree with you there. It has a great sour profile. Uh, profile. It even feels, it has a feeling of a sour, which is really what we always are chasing. We're chasing that uh, that kind of cheek tingling sour. And the, my first sip of this was sour. Uh, whereas a lot of like the 450 North beers, those are sour ales in spirit, but rarely are they sour because of how much fruit they have in them. Uh, whereas this one is, is sour, it's not overly sweet, it's got great flavor, it tastes just like these uh, popsicle, like when you let your, your uh, the pouch popsicle thing melt or whatever uh, popsicle you have, if you can drink it, this is exactly what it tastes. This tastes like a liquid popsicle, a melted popsicle. There's no getting around it. The lemon's there, that gives it that sweetness. The blue raspberry's there. Um, have you ever had a blue raspberry? No. 
this was just conjured but by blue scientists, raspberry right? flavor is, yeah. is something that we've all had multiple times. Was that a thing? Because we're men of a certain age. Like, when you would go to football games, like, blow pops were the thing mm, when we were coming pops, up. Yeah. Blue raspberry was the flavor of our childhood. I think it was. Kool-Aid, I think, might have been. Do you, who, who pioneered it? But blue raspberry, right? Like, yeah, blue raspberry, but Kool Aid had Chuck a blue. Chuck can't help out because he's not no, he's man too young. He's too young. But Kool Aid had a blue Kool Aid, and it was delicious. Chuck mom, did you buy? Did, she bought the Kool Aid, right? Of course. And you have was, to buy a whole bag of sugar just to make it. Right. It's, yeah, because it's two cups, a little pouch of a little pouch like this of Kool Aid. Do you and then two cups of sugar? Do you have? Do you have right now? And you in Caterade's kitchen? Do you guys have a? pitchers we have pitchers but not like the old school pitcher like where my mom had the tupperware pitcher where you you yeah yep you gotta or, do the top thing or it turned one was oh we strained. didn't have one that turned one was strained and one was just the oh, oh the strain we have the strain ones yeah, yeah strain and it's then almost like an aerator you flipped it to the other side it was just the full it was just the, no one ever open. used the full hole why would yeah. you use that That's never use the full. never you go gotta full use hole. the grates yeah yeah <laughs> but that sludge on the bottom yeah, sludge on the bottom. Because you'd have to... That's perfect. you got to mix it every time. Two cups of sugar. Mm-hmm. Plus this little magical packet. <laughs> plus a little packet. But two cups of sugar. Uh, yeah, yeah, we had that for sure. And then eventually they came out with the... Our kids will never know that. Cylinders. And you'd unscrew the huge lid and you'd measure with the lid. Yeah. You know? Oh, like Gatorade powder. Like Gatorade, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it kool have you ever started, Have like, you ever bought a Kool-Aid packet for... For your boys. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you we, it's never come up. I I used I don't to remember when it was nineteen cents a packet. Yeah, I don't know that we've got that Probably we've done those ones. Out. Where you've never you made, need two cups of sugar. I think the packets they sell now, they're just water and packet. Like sugar was like milk, sugar like to make Kool Aid. Mm-hmm. That was, I can't remember the last time we bought sugar. Yeah, I don't. I honestly don't know either. My Buy mind. a bag of sugar. This is for my, baking. This is my mind. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it's all baking. It's never for. A it's not drink. for Kool Aid. Man, imagine all the sugar we were drinking back then. My 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 father in law. And they wonder why Kool-Aid. energy drinks are like Kool-Aid. so popular now because we're not getting our two cups of sugar a day. Yeah, where are these people and their high horses being like, you can't fucking have this? Like my okay, I uh, I love her. This is my mother in law says all this. Sh- you know about energy drinks like she's oh like, yeah kids these days but yeah and but she worries about me like right. having a couple a week but i bet because my father-in-law i'm gonna text him after this i and he and he listens so i know he won't comment but i'll hear about it later yeah like, how much sugar I, are you drinking no 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 i bet they pushed kool-aid and it was oh, more yeah. her my, oh yeah my, they uh, pushed kool-aid there's a lot of things like this the, is the, awesome these are the it's the same generation that talked about how millennials uh got participation trophies and now they're all like um soft yeah who gave them participation trophies their fucking parents they weren't giving them to each other yeah that's the thing it's just same thing with energy drinks and kool-aid but like come on people come on who was who was making toys back in the 90s santa claus boomers and they were the most dangerous pieces of shit of all time. Turbo Choking man. hazards, all of them. Turbo Man. Turbo Man. I, we should do an entire episode just on that movie. Uh, Jingle All the Way. Yeah. I because just, it is just an watched amazing it a couple movie. Months ago. Who's the bad guy in Jingle All the Way? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Who is the actual villain in Jingle All the Way? I, mm. I'm going to tell you who it is. I think it's Phil Hartman, but no, it's it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> he checks out of fatherhood for the entire year, comes back for one season, and all of a sudden is the hero of the fucking movie. No. Why do you think Phil Hartman was able to swoop in? Because Arnold Schwarzenegger's working all day, calling calling mattress uh, favors in and stuff. He has to go out like on Christmas Eve and get a toy for his son because he didn't do that shit early. Yeah, way to phone it in. Way to phone it. I know, you know, but Phil Hartman comes from a single parent household where he has to do both. Where it's expected that he's looking for, for a, you know, yeah, he's looking for a, a mate. He's moving in on an obviously married woman. That's that's fucked up. True, it's yeah. fucked up. But she's also probably lonely. 
she rebuffs his advances multiple okay, times. Okay, well, that's messed up. Okay, well, all right. No, I'll, that's not messed up. But, that's but not messed up that no, she rebuffs. No, it's messed up that, that Phil, <laughs> Phil Hartman keeps going in on it, but I still don't think he's the bad guy. I think... I and think that Arnold Schwarzenegger is the bad guy. And he's got a chubby fucking kid. You can't come in like the day before Christmas and be like, I'm the hero. He's too busy out there providing. Yeah, maybe. You can make that argument. You know. That's a fair argument. You know, you got to provide. But he's not. He's just, like, they show him. He's just talking on the phone. He's at a company Christmas party. He's not doing shit. <laughs> like, you or I would leave the Christmas party early to be there for our kids. But not Arnold Schwarzenegger in Jingle All the Way. And that's Christmas in July. That's the Christmas in July segment for the Brew Crew Podcast. <laughs> that was I don't, have, I don't have any Christmas. Thunder. Uh, I like this beer. I think this beer... I give this beer a 4.25. You could doctor this up. A little doctor what or something. Up. Yeah, yeah. You, you could, could use this you, as a mixer for sure. You could, yeah, this is, you could have this so it's punching above its weight class. Ooh, that'd sure. be really good. We should try that. Uh, like, and blend it. Like, throw it through a um, uh, Margaritaville or something like that. Yeah. And, like, blend it. Just mm-hmm. raise it, you know, like a white rum or something like that. I agree. You could, you could, you could punch this up. This beer is very good. Uh, it's not quite a five. I think it needs no. just a little bit more of something, probably sour, uh, maybe more sour ale. It's definitely the front of the palate. It's not the back of the palate. So it, like, uh, it's a sugar yeah. shock. Mm-hmm. But it's very good. I like it. Four, two, five. Boom. Yes, boom. Uh, well... As far as uh, as far as uh, my Madden ratings go, yeah, I you were ruminating the whole time. I, I tried ruminating, but I didn't ruminate <laughs> very well. Um, it was more a question for you, and you answered it right off, right away. So I was hoping we would have more to talk about in the third segment here. But um, what? I don't know. I don't know. Are you having a good day? Yeah, I am. Uh, any day that I hear Stone Cold's voice, I'm having a good day. Oh, we got the screen. Don't degrade the champion at any time. <laughs> I love that they're all Macho Man. Oh, yeah, that's just a Macho Man soundboard. That's the awesome. The one. Don't bet against me. Yeah, I won't. I won't bet against you. I have you. to look the other way because I couldn't download this one, so I had to keep it up. That's what she said. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought about it during it, and we always come up with good ideas, and it's just, uh, you know, a lot of it is following through, but people have been asking me, and please let us know, like, and the people are going to let us know, have let us know by now, if you want to do the advent calendar, yeah. because I really want to get that in Let's get that by, in. by the beginning part of August. But people are suggesting, multiple people, not Many people. interconnected, Many people. that we should do a whale podcast. A whale podcast. A whale podcast. So do desirable beers and then just line them up. Mm. And I go, I would love to do that. Mm. But then part of me with whales, one, you could only do tasters. Mm-hmm. Some of that shit's going to go to waste. Some, well, we, we would need to invite some. Okay, maybe a whale, po- a whale episode would be uh, valuable with Phil and Steph. It could, it could be, but... And they, maybe even Aaron, but he doesn't seem to want to be on. Um, so, so some of that, like, you know, do you... Because some of it, then it goes off the rails. And I, I agree there's a time and a place for it. Is it okay to have, like, a three-hour show? It, it is, because... Especially I, if you're doing whales. There, there's a place like that. So You like, would have to listen to as more, much money as we're spending. A little more conversation or whatever. And we can get Chuggalo Jeff, who, thank you for being on the episode, he, he can get us a Utopias, I believe, still, to this day. Um... If we want it. Again, I would $300 today. Let's do it. All right, we'll do it. I'll, I'll let them know. Uh, and I will PayPal that money. The The interesting thing with that is, so I've cataloged both what I've bought and what I've received from the brewery. I, I opened my fridge on Sunday, and I was like, I need to go to the store. I don't need to go to the store, but right. there, was, there was holes. But there's things you don't want right now. Yeah. Yeah, I get so, it. 
I went to the store on Sunday. <clears throat> Guess who I saw? Pat is running around on a Sunday at noon. And I was like, Pat, what are you doing here? And he's like, I'm doing inventory. At his store? At his store. Hmm. So he's working working hard, putting in, putting in the time, putting in the effort. And I go, I apologize. I haven't been here very much. And I showed him a couple of pictures. Hmm. So he goes, send me that guy's contact information because he wants to fill out. He's got some holes in his personal collection. Oh, for the brewery? Uh, no, for... Pat for Pat's personal collection, like he made it oh, sound like he he collection. wants he wants some specific stuff for his collection. Like for I his told him, personal like, at home collection. Yeah, like okay. I told him, like the guy has you know a couple ales oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. stuff like that, and he goes, "That's I'm I'm after I'm that in. stuff." Yeah, yeah. And I go, "He's in beer geeks." I feel like we need to get Pat. So we we are a barrel house, um, a barrel house exclusive for the advent calendar, but. We need to work Pat in somehow. I, I, I wish we could. And I've talked to him a little bit about this. And I go, I wish you could just drink on the premise. Mm-hmm. Or like had an area. Because mm-hmm. I've seen his back room or whatever. And like we could. I can bring hang, some hang chairs. Out back there. Just hang long, out in the parking lot. chairs. Line. Yeah. Because then, you know, then at that point, it's like, I want to incorporate him. But then it's like, oh, you could go over to King's Table, which is Kitty Corner. But it's too, too far away. Or yeah. like. But that's a different business. Yeah. We're trying to promote one business at a time. So again, I, again. He could build an advent calendar. He should build an advent calendar. He, there's so many it. people that buy from there. I mean, yeah. he wouldn't buy, again, 30 and $40 four packs if he wasn't moving it. He's a amazing business. He knows man, what he's and doing. And he's expanded his effort. But. He knows what he's doing. And if you and if we could he's there while you're him. there, yeah. he'll let you mix and match. Cause he I mean he knows he, he he's coming back for the money. Mm-hmm. Like so I just I picked up a couple of I picked up some uh some high noons, because that's my mm-hmm. go to, and then uh obviously some lighthearted. Hoff had never had a lighthearted. Oh, well. So I bequeathed him. Glad one. he did. Um what you know the Hoff. Yeah. You know the beer that brought Hoff and I together. Yeah. Maybe you... So what the was truth? the first beer that I cracked? No. What was the first beer that you cracked with Hoff? When Hoff came over. Oh, uh, I don't know. First beer... That, I remember Hoff as a truth guy through and through. Uh, it was a, it was 120 minute. Oh, okay. And uh, so then we sat here and he brought over a, uh, six, a six pack or something. I was like, no... There's a reason you're coming here. We're not going to King's Tables mm-hmm. to drink what I have. So. Yeah. But it's, it's still thoughtful when you show up with something. Hell yeah. But anyways, that's I'm, I'm beginning to ramble. So I could just sit here and just... Did he uh, convince you to work for him? Uh, th- that is another conversation. Did it come for up? Off, uh, oh, yeah. With I'm it, sure it did. Within the first 10 minutes. Hoff's always working. Eight, eight minutes. Hoff's always working. So uh, fun conversations for after we hit... Uh, the stop recording button. But do you have anything else for the people? Uh, no, thanks for listening and watching. For the people. Listening, yeah. It's uh, up to date. So it's if, up to date. If you're telling people, oh, it's only on YouTube. No, Mm-mm. JT put in the time, put in the effort, put in all of the sweat equity, and he uh, made it audio only. Well, yeah. So, so get that where you uh, get your viewing pleasures. Listen in the car. Bye.